Hey y'all, Data Guy here, uh, back with another viewer request video. Um, so I know you guys like submitting a PySpark job into just kind of standalone Spark cluster, but one comment was that you wanted to actually see it submitted to a hosted Spark cluster, something like Databricks. Um, and so I actually have access to a Databricks Azure instance, so that's the one I chose. Um, so if you go in here, this is the DAG we're going to build. Um, so I'll show you all the way from the start where we're going to ingest some CSV files um, just from a local our local file system, just to kind of make this easy, selecting them, doing some basic transformation, uploading them in S3, and then actually running some Databricks workflows. Uh, so the unique part about this is uh, this is going to use the Astronomer Databricks provider, which allows you to leverage the cheaper Databricks workflow compute, um, but not actually have to schedule it using Databricks workflows because that can be a little bit tricky. Um, and so also just, you know, one UI, much easier troubleshooting, much shorter time resolution. Um, and so here Databricks workflow, we're going to just do some join data using the Databricks notebook operator. Um, and so what's cool about this is that you can also swap this out for if you wanted to submit a file, you can just submit a PySpark file and it will run it just the same. Um, so it's up to you and I'll kind of show you how you can swap that out if you'd like to. Um, and then you also are, have their transform data, loading a file um, and, you know, just deleting them from S3 and creating a graph out of them. Um, but what we're really going to focus on here is just, you know, how to set up Databricks and how to set up a way to submit these notebook runs to uh, your Databricks workflow cluster. Um, so without further ado, let's kick it over to VS Code. We'll start from scratch and build a Databricks repo. So I've heard the responses about the good form new format. Y'all like it, so we're going to keep doing it. So starting all of our videos from scratch where we're going to actually build the repo step by step. So here we're going to do um, actually, sorry, I got a CD into my data guy repo, um, and then CD make directory DBX airflow, right? That's a cool way to abbreviate Databricks that I've just recently started seeing. So here we'll see DBX, and then we'll run astro dev init, um, and this will bring in all the folders we need to run airflow locally. Um, and then what we'll do is start open this folder up in our VS Code environment. So go into data guy video repos and boom, here we are. So what you'll need to install, and also if you want to follow us along, I'm going to drop a link in the description. You can follow on this whole tutorial um, in our learn documentation. Um, so here in the requirements, going to uh, have the Airflow providers, Amazon, because we're using S3, uh, the Astro provider for Databricks, so make sure you don't use the Airflow provider if you want to, or the regular provider for Databricks, use the Astro one, because it also can be asynchronous, um, which is good for Databricks workflows because they typically take a long time. Um, and your Astro SDK Python, this is just so you can interact with Python, um, create them with Astro SDK. Just easy use features here. And then Seaborn and Matplotlib, don't have to worry about these. This is just because I create a visualization at the end, um, just because, you know, why not? Or I didn't actually. Tomorrow, my colleague Tamara created this whole repo and I'm just kind of following along with it. So let me specify that as well. Got to give credit where credit is due. I'm sorry for uh, not saying that earlier. Um, and then within our Docker file, we're also just going to enable uh, the Databricks classes. So what we'll do here um, is over from into our docker file here not our airflow settings um, perfect and then what you are also going to want to do is set your uh, or actually don't need to do this because I set all my connections via the UI but you can also set your connections via um, the environment file here you're going to need your databricks AWS and just a database to source event I'm just using the local airflow Postgres database and I'll show that later um, but that is all you'll need other than also the, I mean, if you're following this long, just copy the repo down and you can have all the data available. But um, if you haven't, so here's what it will look like. Um, and if I copy and paste it in here and paste. So here, yeah, we have the shares of electricity, of hydro, uh, solar and wind in all of these different countries. Um, so this is what we're processing uh, in Databricks. That's what we're loading initially. Um, and now I think we're all set. Oh, and then also, um, and I'll show you, you'll need to have your Databricks notebook code. So if you want to submit your Databricks runs um, from Airflow, 
what you'll need to do is actually have your notebook code obviously available um, within Airflow. So what I'd recommend doing is if you're gonna do that, just paste it inside your DAGs folder um, so that your DAGs can easily reference it. And so here within our Databricks notebook code, and don't worry, these tokens are expired, um, my join data notebook code, um, which is just going to allow me to pull that data from the S3 bucket where I kind of am using it as a staging area, um, loading them into separate Spark data frames, collecting just the specified name here. So United States is what I chose. Um, and then converting it to pandas and saving it to S3. And then my second Databricks notebook code is again, pulling those files from S3, um, which is again, just kind of being used as an intermediary storage between Databricks workflow steps. Um, you could also use the Databricks uh, local file store if you wanted to, but it's effectively just the same process. Um, and so here we have the summation column for each Spark data frame. So just taking, hey, what is the total amount of different renewable sources um, as a percentage of their overall electricity generation. So how much versus you know oil, coal, things like that. Um, and then loading that into S3, which we will then use to generate a visualization that's gonna look like this. Um, so here we have our percentage of solar, hydro, and wind in the United States. You can see doing pretty bad for a while and then we're climbing above 20% uh, right now. So love to see that. Um, still not good enough though. And so, now we have everything kind of set up for actually writing our DAG. Um, so what we'll do with our, to create a new DAG is obviously just create a new file. So Databricks elt.py. Um, and so within this file, we will first do our amazing imports as we do with all of our DAGs. So here we're importing DAG, date, time, SQL, file, table, uh, our Databricks notebook operator, Databricks workflow task group, S3 delete objects operator uh, for cleaning up afterwards, pandas, seaborn, and map plot. Um, so just all the things that we are going to be using here for manipulating the data. Uh, then we're also going to set quite a lot of variables. So if you want to have you know your Databricks workflows be completely managed externally, you'll also need to obviously submit your Spark cluster. But I'll actually get to that in a second. Um, so first I have my country, login email, uh, the S3 bucket that I'll be using, AWS region that that S3 bucket is hosted in, um, then your Databricks notebook uh, path. So this is just dynamically creating it from that login email and Databricks notebook. So this is assuming you're storing it under Databricks. If you were just pulling it from your local file system, you would just say, you know, from Databricks notebook code, submit uh, PySpark shop and just submit that Python file directly from there. Um, I just chose to host them, or Kamar just chose to host them in, uh, in Databricks notebooks because a lot of people, I guess, like uh, creating their notebooks within Databricks. Uh, but you are no means confined to that. You could still, as I showed you in our previous uh, video, it's kind of submitting a Spark job um, to a Spark cluster. You can do the same thing here where you just reference the local file and submit it that way. Um, and it's effectively the same process. And so here I just have all my paths to my different data sources, my S3 folder, um, transform data, just to have places to store everything, um, and just setting result file paths dynamically with Jinja templating based on that. Um, I have my job cluster key, so the name of the job I'm, or cluster I'm gonna create. Then you see I'm just referencing some Databricks connection IDs, so just make sure, and I'll show you, I'll show you where I created these in the UI, but create these in the UI within these same names if you're following along at home. And then set your S3 folder country subset. So just this is where it's going to store just your country's particular data. And then we're going to submit a job cluster specification. So here we have our Databricks job name, a cluster name, so a key. So that's the tutorial cluster. Just really basic uh, cluster details here. Which version of Py, uh, Spark, um, node type, um, and then we're also installing PySpark um, when we create this, so that we can run those PySpark notebooks that we're creating. Um, and then after we're done with all that, we can finally start creating our DAGs. Um, and so the first thing we're gonna do is just some Astro SDK transformations on our initial files. So here just selecting from each of those tables, just the information for our particular country. Then we're gonna set our uh, AQL data frame. Again, just an Astro SDK function that allows us to turn a pandas data frame and adjust a pandas data frame. So we can just bring in a pandas data frame and then create a plot um, based on it. And then it'll see save that figure in that SHW folder um, that I showed you earlier. Um, let me actually just close this out so you don't have to see it. Um, and so now the next thing we're gonna do is create our DAG. And so here, in, 
way. There we go, much better. Um, here we can create our DAG um, by first, um, we are going to load those files up into uh, S3. So here we're going to use uh, the dot expand method um, and kwargs to basically take in those different uh, solar, hydro, wind, CSV paths, um, and then output them into our database. So that's going to be our Postgres database, which is just, I'm using the local one, but you can use, I think, literally any database here um, that is SQL compatible. Then after that, we are also going to um, select, so for country tables, you can see we're adjusting those tables by declaring our uh, load file operator um, again with the dot partial. Actually, no, I already used, did this, so I don't know why I copied that again. My bad. Um, so here I actually want to save these files as three, sorry. Not just tables, so silly. Um, so here we're saving the files as three using the export to file operator again using the dot expand uh, method to bring in those country tables so ingestion tables dot map or then use the dot map method to dynamically set hey here's the input data which is dx there which is the, uh, each country table for each of those subsets of csvs uh, and then we're here outputting that into an s3 bucket for ingestion into databricks then the next thing we're doing is actually creating our Databricks uh, task group. So here we have a Databricks workflow task group, and it's important to use this because this will actually allow it to use Databricks workflows to execute your uh, notebooks, um, which allows you to leverage the much cheaper compute of Databricks workflows because they're trying to push that over at Databricks, I believe. Um, and it's a great tool, so why not? Um, so after you've created that task group, you'll then use dot with task group and put in two Databricks notebook operators. And so here, this is where, you know, if you want to sub out your notebook path, you could have it be stored locally um, and still use the same uh, functionality. Um, and then so here, if my source is S3 bucket, yours could be your local computer. I'm selling it to send it to that tutorial cluster, referencing my Databricks connection ID. Um, and you see I have join data, then transform data. This will create a task group where it's going to create the cluster, then join the data and transform it. Um, and so, Next, what I'll do is delete our uh, files from our ingestion bucket in S3. So if I want to run it again, I can, uh, you know, put a different country in and not just have to uh, overwrite it. I have a clean S3 bucket. And I'm not saving, and I'm not spending any money on storage that I don't need. And then what we're going to do is load the result from that transformation from our Databricks resolve file path, which is just in our S3 bucket, and Put it back into our Postgres database. And then what we're going to do here is save our files to S3, then go into that task group to use the Databricks workflow uh, task to run one notebook than the other, um, then create a graph um, by bringing that loaded file from our Postgres database and using it to execute that create graph function. Um, then we're also going to use the AQL cleanup function to uh, clean up any temporary tables. So this is a cool little asterisk decay feature that will clean up any temp tables that were created in your relational database over the course of the DAG. So it runs in parallel to your DAG, just a nice little quality of life feature. Um, and now that we're all set up, um, what we can do is run astro dev start and then kick it over into the UI and uh, show you this actually running. So before we get to actually running this, I do want to show you the connection details you'll need to have. Um, so here, have an AWS connection ID. Um, in this case, you'll just need your uh, you know, access key. I did programmatically 24 hour tokens um, because I'm doing using them in these videos and I wanna make sure they're in, in expired by the time the video goes up. Um, so then I also have the uh, AWS secret access key session token here. Um, so save that for connection to your AWS. Obviously make sure it's uh, accessibility to the S3 bucket you defined. Um, and then for your Databricks connection, uh, it's pretty easy to use. So here you're going to just put your host, um, which is your Databricks uh, ID or URL, then set your login name as token. And then as your password, you're going to put a token that you can generate within Databricks. And so if I actually go log into Databricks, I also want to show you the notebooks in there and kind of what it looks like on this side in a second. Um, so if we go into our user settings, developer, 
um, you can manage your access tokens. So you can see I created one. After you created it, you can't see it again. Um, I'm not going to create a new one right now for obvious reasons because they actually are pretty short and copyable. <laughs> um, so here also just to show you where I hosted my workspace file. So you'll need to have them under whatever your Databricks login ID is that you use there. And then here it's just that same code I showed you earlier. But again, this could be hosted on your local machine. Um, so now running it within Airflow. So if I go here, um, it will take a little while. So we'll look at kind of just a job run I did earlier. Um, so here, if we look at our graph, so we have you know, our adjustment tables all going in parallel. Can't read the logs for some reason, great. Um, but we have our XCOM template, so showing our output table name, um, return value, it's a, in the schema temp astro using that database connection. Um, and then here going back out, we have, um, I'm saving a test three, so I won't go through everything because it's you know, not super interesting, just classic file ingestion. But if we look at the logs for our create Databricks workflow, awesome. Um, they, here, if we go to the render template, I'll show you the Databricks run ID, Databricks run ID. And it's honestly not even worth showing you the logs because they don't really show much. Um, it'll just show you that the Databricks job is running. And if it fails, it'll give you an error code like job failed with error code Y. So let's see if there's a, uh, oh my God, that's annoying. Um, so here. Let's try rerunning this. So clear task, clear, and it should rerun here. Um, so if we refresh the page, here we go. Okay, cool. So here we found the logs served from the host um, where it was successful. So here we have um, the Databricks run ID. So the Databricks workflow, renewable analysis, join data, um, and you can see execution date. You can see the job run in Databricks. So if you want to go look at it in Databricks, which I recommend, because you'll get more robust error codes there uh, if something goes wrong. But otherwise, the information, if it's successful, is great. Just if it goes wrong, it only will, Databricks only services back like a numeric error code, which you can then have to look up. And so you can see here, since it was successful, I can see within Databricks, um, you know, go look at the job run that was executed. Um, and then you can also uh, I, that's really honestly it. There's not much more visibility here. It's kind of uh, interesting. I mean, I don't really need to be, but it's annoying. And so here you can see kind of the errors will be more robust within here. So I had an expired token. Um, and so that was the issue there. It wasn't actually, it was that I was using a, uh, didn't I include my session tokens, so they weren't actually that accurate. But I think that's just boot 3 not being the best. Um, and so you can see similar errors here, but if it's successful, um, you know, you'll just see a successful job run. Um, and you can see these are all launched manually. So if you look at how they were triggered, um, and so see, it's going to look as launched manually as if you had launched it within the UI yourself um, instead of scheduled via the Databricks service because you're not actually scheduling within Databricks. Um, and then you can also look at your compute here. You can look at your uh, logs. Um, is there anything interesting here? Yeah. And here you can see, you know, just underlying output. Um, of anything that is happening within your Spark UI. Um, so cool little workflow here. Uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting as I did um, and go try it out today. So I hope this helped the user that was asking how to submit to kind of hosted uh, Databricks environments. And you can see with the Airflow UI, you know, it's really simple uh, kind of logging based connection to them and set up and Similarly easy on it. Spark just easy to connect with, I, I, I guess, because um, it's easy to connect to locally as well. Um, so anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Uh, Data Guy out.